Hello everybody, Alex Stevenson, Jake Face here. We're going to finish up uh, the Born of the Gods spoiler. So we have a lot to get through, so I don't think we're going to have time for any other segments. Let's just make sure that we hit every card mm. today. Okay, so let's start it off. Last, we left off January 17th now. We've got the full spoilers, and uh, we've got a lot to get through. Let's do it. Chromanticore. This is uh, one of each color is the casting cost. It's a 4-4 enchantment creature, manticore creature, and then it's got bestow for two and each color and uh, it's got flying, first strike, vigilance, trample, lifelink and if you do it as an aura it gets it gives plus four plus four and with all the abilities so it's a four four flying, first strike, vigilance, trample, lifelink for five or for seven you can enchant a creature with that what do you think about that card? It's obviously pretty exciting, it's a mythic it's cool, it's fun you know it's like not the best card in the world, but it's just splashy and fun to see. And probably not going to make constructed just because five color is too difficult to get. Yeah, I mean, unless there is some sort of chromatic lantern. But even that, it's like chromanticore is not then what you want to be finishing with, I don't even think, you know. So at least can we hope to see it in maybe a couple commander decks? Oh, for sure. It's a commander card, like, hands down. Put this on your Child of Alara, and, you know, stuff like that. I could see this being a really fun commander card. Okay. Yeah, I think it's going to stop right there. Because mm -hmm. even in Limited, I don't know how you're getting five color. Yeah, you. the enchantment part of it doesn't really make it relevant for Modern or Legacy necessarily, I guess, either. Which is sad. So, overall, don't expect to see much of this card. So I guess in that respect, it kind of sucks that it's taken up a mythic slot since we're not going to be able to do much with it in standard. Mm -hmm. But it is actually a pretty cool but card. But that's kind of the place you want those cards to be too, you know. I mean, in you terms don't necessarily of want like the regular rares to be all shit in standard, basically. <laughs> yeah. So you, so wait, you want the mythics to be? Yeah. If you, if they're gonna do something really like big like this, you want it to be a mythic instead of a rare, so yeah. that it doesn't come around to you that often, because how often do you want to see this in limited, you know? Yeah, not like much. Never, I guess that's true. Basically. It is, I mean, it definitely looks mythic and mm -hmm. feels mythic. Yeah, I think it's a fine mythic. And it's the strongest, in terms of just the written text on yeah. it, it's the strongest. It the is the best creature. bestow creature, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Spirit of the Labyrinth is a two-mana, three-one spirit enchantment creature. Each player can't draw more than one card each turn. Good for White Weenie. I like it for White Weenie. People are hating on this card in our local meta. They, or the two or three people that have asked me about it. Okay. And when I say, I think it's a cool card, I really like it for mono white, especially White Weenie, you know. They're like, well, it's not really a good answer to... <laughs> this is how everyone in our meta sounds, by the way. <laughs> it's not really a good answer to Sphinx's Revelation because they'll just remove it. It's like, yeah, but then they concentrated on removing that card, you know. Instead yeah. of another card that could be potentially better for your strategy, like Precinct Captain, you know. So, I I think it's a really good card. Three power makes it super relevant in an aggro strategy. I can't see how you can dislike this card, unless you want to be drawing a million cards, too. Well, people are playing Divination. Yeah. You've got Control Decks playing it. Mm -hmm. Your worst matchup is Control anyway. So having main deck tools for that's not bad. The fact that it turns off big Garrick's card draw ability, right? Or yeah. I guess it doesn't because that's, no, that's keeping... Because it's not actually drawing yeah. cards. Yeah. You're Primal Hunter just... it would, but that one you get to... Either you reveal or you look... I think you reveal all five of them and get all creature cards from them. Alright, in that respect, it doesn't stop Domri either. No. And it doesn't stop Jace. No, it doesn't um, stop Jace. Draw. So it doesn't stop a lot of important things, mm -hmm. but it does stop the card draw from Sphinx's Revelation, not the life gain, right? Or but do you have it'll to... stop their divination too. It know? does stop the divination, which it, I think like is stops good. it dead 
actually. They can't even play it on turn three to get into their supreme verdict if they don't have it, you know. So I really think this card is very good okay. for a white weenie. Yeah. Against I think it's control. Fine. And maybe it's not a main deck card, but three power is hard to It's a fine probably sideboard option. Yeah. I guess it kind of stops uh mono black from getting out of control with underworld connections too. They can't draw more than just their regular draw step card on their turn. Yeah, so there's a couple things. It doesn't lock down important play planeswalkers right no. now, but still, it's it's fine. Mm -hmm. Two mana three one's fine. Uh, next is Glimpse the Sun God. This is a white and X instant tap X target creature, scry one. So it's basically a white gridlock with scry. Mm -hmm. Not much to say about it. I think um, it's going to be fine and limited. Yeah. Being able to scry and tap down uh, if you're playing some sort of tempo game mm -hmm. could really help a lot. So I think it's a good limited card. Works for Heroic too, actually. So yeah, you can pinch. declare your creatures as attackers and then cast this targeting your opponent's block could be blockers and any number of your heroic creatures that you can target after that too that's so, a really good call yeah and then pump all your white creatures yep. pump your green creatures whatever i think this could be a really important card for a heroic strategy actually that's cool i like that that's a good call that probably makes it better mm -hmm. uh next is heroes podium five mana legendary artifact it's a rare each legendary, each legendary creature you control gets plus one, plus one for each other legendary creature you control. Then X tap, look at the top X cards of your library. You may reveal a legendary creature card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Uh, not going to see much construct play, I imagine, but I really like the idea, the implications of it for Commander. Yeah, great for Captain Sisse deck. Really likes this. The fact that it's legendary and can be searched up with Captain Sisse is really good. So you can just play a ton of legend yeah permanence in general and our legend creatures there's so many mm -hmm. so any sort of fun commander deck that's full of legends would work really well with mm -hmm. this i like it other than that you're not going to be really happy yeah. opening it in a yeah. draft you don't want that in draft uh nessian demolock five mana three three uh beast tribute three and if the tribute wasn't paid destroy target non-creature permanent so, 5 mana 3-3, three, three, destroy a non-creature permanent, or 5 mana 6-6. Six, six. Both of those seem fine for limited. Not going to see much of this card outside of that. Yeah. I think it suffers from not always being what you want. You know? Mm -hmm. An opponent can always just say, you're not going to destroy my Planeswalker. I'll give you a 6-6. Six, six. You wanted to, <laughs> like... Like, you wanted to kill my Elspeth with this? Well, instead, I'll give you a 6-6 six, six and just create tokens that can block it every turn. No, that's a good point. And I think a lot of these tribute cards suffer from that condition. Mm -hmm. But I don't They're know... They're great limited players, for sure. Yeah, and, and it's tough to say. Yeah. We don't know how this affects the mana curve. I feel like typically new sets in the block slow down a format. Mm -hmm. There was, I found by the end, I felt like it was very fast format. Are we going to see it slow down? Presumably, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so maybe the 4 and 5 drops become better if it slows down, but yeah. maybe it speeds up. I don't know. It's tough to, you know, know right now, but it's a lot more difficult for me to evaluate 4 and 5 drops because you don't know what role they are going to end up being overall mm -hmm. in in these, this this block's draft set, you know? Yeah, that's true. You don't know if it's going to eventually if just they're going to make or break a deck or, yeah. Yeah, or if they're just going to be out of the question most of the time besides mm -hmm. a couple of them in your deck. In which case, you can pick them later. You know, they're less important than your beginning game. Um, all right, so the next spoiler, we've got Spiteful Return. One and a black, one, one. Uh, oh, it's a zombie, too? That's exciting. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. And uh, bestow for four. And whenever enchanted creature attacks, defending player loses two life. This is kind of cool, actually. I like the price on this. Um, I'm curious if this is good enough for some sort of zombie strategy. Two mana, and every time it attacks they lose two life. It's pretty good, actually. Mm -hmm. The stow is a pretty nice icing on the cake. Um, I'm very curious about the playable potential of this mm -hmm. card. I found that four mana bestow is actually pretty fine. You know, oh, I played two Hopeful Eidolon in that one drop deck I made. Okay. Or that we saw, or however it was. <laughs> yeah. And it's been cool. Four mana is not that bad. 
Okay. So realistic, you could get that, and then it's at least like a little shock on a stick. And mm -hmm. even if they verdict, you get to come in for three damage again. Mm -hmm. I actually really like this card yeah. and the fact that it's a zombie. I don't. I think I might have looked it over the first time I, I saw it. So this is cool. How how good is it? Limited. It's. I think it's fine. Mm -hmm. I think it's a fine limited card. It's Bestow a, is good, so you get good intera positive interaction with Heroic, and you get a decent cheap dude for, you know, if you have removal maybe to back him up, let yeah, him get in a couple He actually times. might just be a really good black aggro card in general, um, because he enchants that demon, the three drop demon. With the flying, yeah. You're right. Then you get in for six. Six on turn four. I like It'll it. basically make him a desecration. That's pretty, pretty solid. Mm -hmm. Um, cool card. Vanguard of Brimaz, Brimaz, two white, two two, vigilant cat soldier. And whenever you cast a spell, it targets him. You get a one one white cat soldier with vigilance. Cool card. Obviously yeah. in the same vein and flavor as uh, Brimaz, mm -hmm. right? The guy we saw earlier. Yeah. Uh, this card's good. We've seen a lot of good white heroic. I think we have a lot more to show, but yeah. A lot of good white heroic, and this mm -hmm. this is like no exception. Uh, Fenax, God of Deception, five mana, four seven. This is the last god I think yeah. to be revealed, and uh, so it's the blue black god. And uh, creatures you control have tap target player puts the top X cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard, where X is this creature's toughness. So. Pretty cool with the big, you know, toughness walls and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Do you think we're going to see some sort of mill strategy get better with this card? With, like, Consuming so. Aberration or something? Yeah. I think the Consuming Aberration combination who, with this guy is really good. Yeah, um, I think so, too. Basically, yeah. if, you, <laughs> if you get enough cards in their graveyard, the Consuming Aberration will just mill them out in one hit, you know? You just have to cast enough spells. So you, all you have to do is play the Consuming Aberration, lead with something that maybe already milled them a couple times. I don't know what is good enough. doesn't seem like there are a lot of really great mill cards at low cost. Yeah, but break, I saw, breaking. Yeah, that's actually a good one. I did see the um, like a suggested list, and it was defender base, you know? With Wall of Frost, uh, yeah, and what's his? But that, the, that's about what I would keeper. expect. Yeah, Doorkeeper. That's mm -hmm. about what I'd expect. And it looked kind of cool. I will say that. So I'm excited to see what happens with him. I'm gonna hate getting milled out by him, but I'm excited to see it. Yeah, we'll see if he's good enough or suffer the fate of being yeah. too slow at five mana. I think mana. he could be a very good limited card though. If you have, if oh, he's yeah. in draft, you can build around him really easily. Yeah, that would be fun too. Yeah. Uh, Whelming Wave. Four mana sorcery, return all creatures to their owner's hands except for Krakens, Leviathons, Octopuses, and Serpents. Isn't it Octopi? Octopi, that's what I would have expected, but no. So, uh, not a ton of those cards in standard right now, but I like the idea of it. Yeah, I think it's a great uh, card for my Sasa EDH deck. Yeah, and then it just fits perfectly with the whole quest for Ua's mm -hmm. Temple or something like that. Oh, that's totally it. the build I'm doing with yeah. EDH with her. So it's fun. Yeah. I like it. I'm excited. Um, pretty funny that we're seeing... We've already seen a couple that seem to be taking up rare slots and not doing much for the average limited game, you know? This is a... I mean, this is an evacuation, you know, at sorcery speed in most cases. Yeah, I guess that's true. So it's and, not like... Good point. It's not like it's unplayable. And there's Sea Lock Monster or whatever from the Theros set that's an uncommon. So there is an octopus available, you know, to have on the board after it resolves too. That's true. Okay. And yeah, just bouncing all creatures can be hugely relevant, especially yeah. against token builds. Uh, Hero of Lina Tower, one green, one one rare with heroic. Whenever you cast a spell that targets it, you may pay X if you do put X plus one plus one counters on it. What do you think of this card? It's actually kind of expensive to use, yeah. but I feel like it can do a lot. Yeah, I wish it had an infect. Yeah, that would be crazy. Uh, I feel like if you're playing enough cheap auras, though, this could totally be a go-to one-drop. Um, 
just play cheap camp trip auras. Even paying an extra one to get a bonus plus one plus one counter is not that terrible. Mm -hmm. Like playing ethereal armor on it, paying an additional one. Yeah, if you go for the one drop aura strategy with it somehow. I'm trying to think of other green ones. There's well, just green white. There's so much heroic now Actually, that there's Celestia definitely a charm there. on on that. It would be really cool. Like plus two, plus two, trample, and then I'll pay X to give it another plus X, plus X counter. So this has potential, but it is pricey. It starts cheap, though, which mm -hmm. is nice. Mm -hmm. So it kind of makes sense. And then late game, it's still good with auras. Yeah. So it's not bad. Uh, all right, this was a big one here. This must be just... Oh, oh one, no, we still one, have more one, after one. this. Um, Acolyte's Reward... We've got two mana instant. Prevent the next X damage that would be dealt to target creature this turn where X is your devotion to white. If damage is prevented this way, Acolyte's reward deals that much damage to target creature or player. Uh, so this is like a harm's way mm -hmm. for white. Uh, Triggers heroic. For, well. uh, for white devotion, I mean. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a little bit narrow. Like, not only narrow in the sense of you need a lot of white creatures to really make this card relevant or else it just isn't going to do anything ever so uh, I think in limited you can easily get blown out by it but you need to have a good amount of white or else it's not going to do what you want it to do I mm -hmm. think I do think it's good for heroic though if you're like if you have the phalanx leader and the, the new Bermontes vanguard or whatever mm -hmm. it could be really good for you yeah so totally playable um, next we have a Crow and con con Conscriptor. 5 mana, 3, 2, uh, Heroic. Whenever you cast a spell, it targets him. Gain control of another target creature until the turn. Untap that creature, it gains haste until the turn. Cool, isn't it? Almost like uh, it's got like a built-in uh, Zealot Conscript. So mm -hmm. I like it. Uh, it's certainly going to be highly limited playable. It's going to be really difficult to beat it, I'm sure, in some instances. Yeah. You have a couple have spells. Enough. Yeah. If you have two spells to target it, I feel like it's just game over. And even your like spark jolt could become yeah. a way to get a plus, creature. Plus yeah. a creature, yeah. So I think this card is going to yeah, be like bomb and, and limited. Super strong. Mm -hmm. Aspect of Hydra, one green instant. Target creature gets plus X, plus X where until in turn where X is your devotion to green. This is kind of, I, I feel like we should have been expecting to see mm -hmm. this card. You think it's going to be any good? Probably not, but it's just a chance. I think it's cool. Like, it's at least plus one, plus one, if you're playing it on a green creature. There's know? a chance. We've got Arbor Colossus, so there's some... It's common. Like, it's, they know that it's not that great. It's not going to be probably ever over plus three, plus three that often. So maybe you'd rather just play Giant Growth, unfortunately. But it does trigger Heroic, you know, if yeah. you're in green. So, highly heroic. playable and limited, mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, Astral Cornucopia, we've got three X... 3x rare artifact enters the battlefield x charge counters on it and then you tap choose a color add one mana of that color to your mana pool for each charge counter on it so for three mana you can tap and add any color or six mana you can tap and add two of one color it's pretty much only playable and limited i really hate this guy and it's expensive yet another example of a rare that's taking up a slot that you definitely are going to yeah. be slam picking every no. time you know this one is really, this one's really gross to me, because it's not even, blah. It's dark stealing it, that's, you can destroy, you know, and you can destroy it by playing Gaze of Granite for zero, and you can <laughs> destroy it with Erupt Decay, yeah. even when you pay six mana for it. I mean, it, I really hate this card, I really, really hate this card, and I wish that they would have just done something like, a little different, maybe two and x or something yeah where you are always investing at least two mana into it i agree i think it's uh overall it's weak mm -hmm. i don't want to see it in a rare slot for sure uh black oak of a dunos three mana zero five defender zombie tree folk and it's got black tap another on tap creature control and it gets plus one plus one until i'm turn. i think it's a fine blocker mm -hmm. uh it's funny that it's a zombie and, and a uh, i think it's mostly going to be like a sideboard more likely a good sideboard option for black and limited, but you know, it's certainly playable if you're in need of playables and it Adds gets bigger. Your devotion at least. Yeah. Courser of Crewfix. This is a three mana two four enchantment creature centaur. 
play with the top card of your library revealed. You may play the top card of your library if it's a land card, and then whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. So very reminiscent of Oracle of Moldiah, which was one more mana, two less toughness, and you could play an additional land. So they are they play different roles, but this one's cheaper with more toughness, which I do think is relevant. Mm -hmm. Plus the whole bonus of gaining a life for each land really I feel like hurts aggro pretty good. Yeah. This one is a really good counter to aggro. I really like the idea of adjusting the uh, top of your library to find lands, mm -hmm. you know, in some way. Because I'm sure there's some shuffle effects. I'm just not thinking in standard right now. That would be fine alongside it, you know? Yeah, I'm trying to think of some too. I can't really, but... I'm sure they exist, yeah. yeah. And uh, it's just cool. Being able to play the land off the top of your library is very good. So I definitely expect to see this make constructed play, mm -hmm. whether it be main deck or sideboard. Crypsis is the next one. One in a blue instant. Target creature you control gains protection from creatures your opponents control until end of turn. Untap it. Hmm. That's cool. Target creature you control gains protection. Okay. I like it. So it's like makes it unblockable and you get to untap it. Mm -hmm. And uh, triggers heroic. So definitely going to be played. Yeah. Makes it unblockable essentially is, is good. Mm -hmm. And you can also play it defensively. Yeah. So I like it. It's a little bit small, I like it too. Culling mark, two and a green, sorcery, tart creature blocks this turn if able. Block. Seems a bit expensive. Yeah. Um Feral Contest was four mana and you got plus one plus one and Well, I'm just thinking of Hunt Down, I think, from Lorwyn. Which was green target creature blocks target creature this turn if able. Oh wow. Yeah. So this seems a bit expensive then. Maybe this can make the crap draft. Who knows? Yeah, actually I like that for it because this is really shit removal too. Yeah, that's true. It's pretty narrow how it works. Um, I guess that probably don't expect to see much limited play with it. Dawn to dusk. We've got two colorless, two white. And choose one or both. Return target enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand and or destroy target enchantment. So this card's really cool for limited. We've already seen a lot of enchantment creatures. I expect this card to be no different as like a lot of times just removal plus mm -hmm. bring back a enchantment or bestow guy card. back to your hand. Yeah. Really good. Strong card. Yep. Good limited for sure and probably constructed playable to an extent. Maybe. It's a if you're chance. blue white, if and you have detention spheres or something like that. I don't know. Maybe there's a chance. There's a chance. At least sideboard. Yeah. Eidolon of Countless Battles. One and two white. Zero, zero enchantment creature spirit. It's a rare. Uh, two and two white bestow. And then it... Uh, enchanted creature or the guy gets plus one, plus one for each creature you control. And plus one, plus one for each aura you control. So I really like... He's actually a 3-mana 2-2 two, two then, right? Because he's... No, he's only a creature by himself. Oh, okay. So he is a 3-mana 1-1 one, one by himself. Mm -hmm. All right. But the math is a little bit harder for me to do on this guy because there's quite a bit going put, on. Uh, an ethereal armor on him, he's a 4-4. Four, four. Because he's already an enchantment, yeah. So I do expect to see some enchantment aura decks since they already, by consequence work reasonably well with heroic guys anyway, mm -hmm. you know? Bestow guys in particular. Yeah, and four mana bestow is really good. So, I do expect to see some sort of heroic or enchantment base aura deck. And this guy could be in it easily. Um, but, I don't know how good the deck will be yet. Mm -hmm. Eye gouge, one black instant. Target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. If it's a cyclops, destroy it. Let's just point out, kills me to vault. <laughs> yes, we need to say that because that is actually relevant. So this could see some cyborg play as a little me to vault killer, mm -hmm. which I think is good. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, Last Breath does the same thing for white, yeah. so now black has a good, cheap, instant speed answer for it. It also like kills Soldier of the Pantheon and other like, aggro cards, so it could be a cyborg card for sure. Mm -hmm. Totally. Fall of the Hammer. One in a red, instant, target creature control deals damage equal to its power to another target creature. This is cool. Uh, so now they've just straight up made Soul's Fire uh, 
cheaper. Mm -hmm. I think this card's great. This one is only to a creature. Soulsfire was also to a player. Okay. If wanted. That is important. But, uh, but I think not, I think this is way more relevant. Mm -hmm. You know. So I think Fall of the Hammer is phenomenally good for limited. Mm -hmm. um, it's like you know a red one-sided pit fight, right? Yeah. So what more can you ask for? Exactly. Uh, Faded Return, four and three black instant. Put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Gains indestructible. If it's your turn, scry two. So it's a cool card. Mm -hmm. I, I really like it flavorfully because it's now indestructible. You know, the faded return of something evil. You expect it to be something evil. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's also instant speed, which we don't commonly see for res spells. Yeah. Rescue from the underworld and makeshift man again being some of the examples. Mm -hmm. That being said, is this card probably still too slow to ever see constructed play? I think this is a wonderful commander card yeah you know and i think that's what this was designed for it's playability and standard probably not really how about know. even in limited it's just too expensive i, I think. think i think in limited especially it's not playable although getting an indestructible creature could be you know especially if it's a big flyer mm -hmm. so who knows if they have some sort of ramp maybe i i do think maybe in standard it could be somewhere like in a devotion deck if you have enough removal and stuff like that too but who knows yeah nick those ramp but who knows I, I agree i think it's probably just gonna be too expensive yeah, for anyone. i really think it's just meant for commander yeah fearsome temper two and a red aura enchant creature is plus two plus two and has two and a red target but you can't block this creature this turn really good for limited mm -hmm. anywhere outside of that not so much but uh eventually turning two blockers off mm -hmm. feels really good Buffing a heroic guy. Yeah. That's going to see a lot of play, I think. Felhide in limited. Felhide Brawler, one and a black, 2-2 two, two Minotaur. Can't block unless you control another Minotaur. So, oh, yeah. Better of, than minus throw. Yep. Worse than Walking Dead. But uh, <laughs> we haven't seen, you know, Spineless. Actually, spineless, the whole Spineless Thug sort of idea for 2-drop, two 2-2. Two, two, you know, the Bears of Black. Mm -hmm. I don't mind it. Yeah, it's fine. You expect it. Yeah. Black is supposed to have the worst creatures. Right, we get it. Flood Tide Serp. That being said, still playable. Yeah, sure I think you for sure. yeah. it's, it's obviously and not good. And if you're a black, but... red aggro, if you can get those um, Death Bellow Raiders and stuff like that from Theros packs in, in Theros Draft, or Theros Block Draft, it'll be really good. Gotta do what you gotta do. Flood Tide Serpent, 5 mana, 4-4. Four, four. Can't attack unless you return an enchantment you control to its owner's hand. Um... Good with into the battlefield enchantments. Not much beyond that. No. I'm not like, um, but it's five mana four four, so mm -hmm. that's fine. That's fine for blue. It's yeah. not great, but that's gonna be a playable comment for sure. Uh, guild three and a black sorcery exile target creature. Put a colorless artifact token named gold onto the battlefield. It has sacrificed this artifact. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. I don't know the wow. guild and gold story. That's but... really. I didn't, I didn't realize that you got the piece of gold either. That's really cool. Yeah, that is cool. So it's a kill spell plus you get something that gives you mana for next mm -hmm. turn. Is it going to see any constructor play? It does exile. Sorcery speed though. I think that's a big hindrance to it. Mm -hmm. But Exile is really good. It just doesn't hit Blood Baron. It is sorcery speed, which does suck. Yeah, I don't think it's that good. I I would I would be surprised if it even saw sideboard play, really. But limited, it'll be really good. Grave Robber, Spider, 3 and a green, 2-4 uh, reach Spider. And it's got 3 and a black. It gets plus X plus X until a turn where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard, and you can only activate it once each turn. And that's a cool card. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to see some play for sure, because <clears throat> it's at worst a giant spider, and it's got a bonus ability. So I like it. Mm -hmm. Good card. Good uncommon. Impetuous Sun Chaser, one in a red, one one flying haste, and it has to attack each turn. If able, it's fine. Not great. A lot of auras and buffs in this set, um, and and in Theros, so. Mm -hmm. I think it's that's cool. going to work out just fine. It's a cool red creature. I'm I'm okay with it. Um, Obviously not great. But yeah. It's the Icarus story, I think, is that one. That's cool. I can get behind that. Yeah. Uh, 
Kraken of the Strait, 7 mana, 6-6 six, six, Kraken. Creatures with power less than the number of islands you control can't block Kraken of the Straits. So, that's pretty, I mean, that's really good if you're mostly blue. Yeah. Uh, for limited, blue at devotion, least. I guess. Yep. I don't think we're going to see much of it beyond that. No, no. But, oh, it's uh, uncommon, too, so... But for limited, I like it a lot. Yeah. I think it could be strong. It is a 7-drop, though, so I would still expect to see it pretty late. Mm -hmm. uh, Loyal Pegasus, 1 white, 2-1 two, flyer, and it can't attack or block alone. Are we going to see this probably just in Slammed and all yeah. the white weenie? I don't know how we couldn't see this. Yeah, but I think it's really good. If, if, I mean, if we're going to go... means you could just... Attack in anyway. So if, yeah, if we're I mean if we're gonna talk about the number of one drops that White Weenie is getting, it is tons. Mm -hmm. Soldier of the Pantheon, Dryad Militant, uh, so um, God, there's Dryad Militant, Soldier, Boros Elite. Um, Boros Elite's a huge one. I guess the Loyal Pegasus now. Yeah, Loyal Pegasus. Maybe they only had twelve, but even if they well, they had Hopeful Eidolon, I guess too. But you don't necessarily have to play yeah. that one. They have the Daring Skyjack at two. They mm -hmm. have the... There's enough beyond one drops, too, where, like... I feel like there was even another one drop white that I can't think of, but even oh, with... Oh, did you say Soldier of the Pantheon and Dryad? Yeah, so Soldier Pantheon, Dryad. Dryad, Boros Elite, Loyal Pegasus now, and maybe even one more. I think Hopeful Aelon's okay. But even if you had 20 one drop white ones, that's huge. Mm -hmm. And it might be benefit you to, is there something in core set that's like 3 mana plus 2 plus 2 to all your guys? Is that in this? In the well, 14? there's Righteous Charge that is a sorcery from Gatecrash. That might actually be worth playing yeah. if you have that many 1 drops, because mm -hmm. that's just ridiculous. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so, yes, I do expect to see Loyal Pegasus in Limited and in Constructed. Marshmist Titan, 7 mana Giant. Costs X less to cast, where X is your Devotion of Black. And it's a 4-5. I think I it's like fine. It. Yeah, yeah, I think it's fine. Mm -hmm. It's a cool black card. Rewards you for being black. It's going to go late, mm -hmm. too. It's going to be more like a, you know, 8th through 11th, maybe even last more than that pick, you know, because mm -hmm. it is expensive. Otherwise, if you don't, if you can't make the devotion work. So I don't expect to see a ton of play. Peregrination, 3 and a green sorcery. Search your library for up to 2 basic land cards. Reveal those cards, put one onto the battlefield tapped and the other into your hand, and shuffle your library and then scribe one. So, that's cool. Yeah, it's okay. It's cultivate at one more for this guy, and th that's fine. Uh, yeah. It's not amazing. But you do get to, uh, yeah, I guess that's A true. ramp spell is much better at three in this kind of case, so this one's just okay. Yeah, we're going to see it. I think you can play it in limited, though. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Perplexing Chimera. 5 mana, 3, 3 enchantment Chimera creature. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may exchange control of Perplexing Chimera and that spell. If you do, you may choose new targets for the spell. This is kind of cool because it messes with the stack. Mm -hmm. And you could, like, steal a uh, Clan Defiance, maybe. You, know, you turn it do, back to them, or yeah, any you could do so much with this. Take a desecration demon, even if they're going to remove it, you know. So could this see constructed play? I think it totally will because you can do it at instant speed, right? Mm -hmm. With your so the blue white control player can steal stuff if if they want to. Well, you have to set it up first, so it's a you have to play it as a sorcery or whatever, you know. Oh, I see. Well, then, all right. Yeah, I guess that makes it a lot more difficult to play. So you have to show them that you're planning on doing it. Okay. But, so but I guess that makes it a lot less cool. good. It's but a really it, cool commander card. Yeah, sure. that's definitely going to see some commander play. But yeah, I guess in that case, then it's not that good. Pillar of War, three mana, three three defender golem creature. As long as it's enchanted, it can attack as though it didn't have defender. This reminds me of the. Uh, training drone from mm -hmm. what was it? New Phyrexia? Or? Yeah, uh, I think it was Mirrored and Besieged. But it was called Training Drone, right? I think so, yeah. And what was it? it How much did it cost? I think it was a 3 mana 3-3. Three, three, mm. And it just couldn't attack or block unless it was equipped. Yep, so this is the Aura version of it. Mm -hmm. I like it. I think this is going to actually see a lot of, or at least a fair amount of limited, limited play. play. for sure. Uh, especially since we're talking all the bestow creatures. Mm -hmm. I actually think that makes it a lot better. Mm -hmm. 
Pinnacle of Rage, 6 mana sorcery, it deals 3 damage to each of 2 target creatures and or players. A little bit pricey. Yeah. Cool in multiplayer, though. Yeah, maybe, but not really. I mean, 3 damage is kind of shitty. That's it's on, Wait, it's only 2 target creatures and or players. So even so in So 2 players, 2 creatures for 6? No, no, no. And or oh, players. Oh, so you're right, you're right. Oh, okay, so now it... Okay. So it's two players, two creatures. Okay, I like it a little more now. It's okay. Yeah. It's still actually not that efficient, but it's okay. Um, we might even be able to... I like it a little more for... Crap. Multiplayer, though. I want it in crap draft. Yeah, though. that's fine, you crap. That's crap. Uh, Scourge of Skull of Veil, three mana, zero, zero, trample Hydra creature. It enters battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it. Tap, sack another creature. Put a number of plus one plus one counters on it. Equal to the sacrifice creature's toughness. Hmm. Okay. Uh, it seems a little bit slow to get going, and you have to invest a lot in it. Yeah, I hate this card actually. So for that reason, it makes it a little more uh, difficult to play, in my yeah. opinion. Putting down more creatures, getting rid of those creatures to let this guy get bigger. Seems I think if really you could, risky. yeah, if you could just sack them, it would have been mm -hmm. cool. But the fact that you have the tap makes it too mm -hmm. susceptible. To I'm not removal. even sure I like the art. It looks weird. I'll have to see it when we get the card itself, but I don't think I like it. Servant of Timurit, 3 mana, 1, 3 zombie, with Inspired. Uh, they lose 1 life, you gain life, equal to life lost this way, and it's got 2 and a black, regenerate it. That card's cool. I like the idea mm -hmm. of it for limited. And we're still, you know, there's some ideas for the Inspired shenanigans. Any of the, the Cycle of Auras or the Springleaf Drum mm -hmm. that interact really well with Inspired. This guy regens, so on defense, he actually taps himself. Yeah, very good. That's a good point. I didn't even think about that, but when they attack in, you regen him, and then he gets to... I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. This guy's cool. Shrike Harpy, 5 mana, 2-2 two, two flyer, tribute 2, and if they don't pay the tribute, target opponent sacks a creature. So, you know, it's 5 mana, 2-2, two, two, four, 4 flyer, or this one's actually really yeah. good, I think. I guess the sack of creature can be really the, bad against yeah. some decks, like token-based builds, but... Or, like, control. Mm-hmm. But, you know, this maybe isn't a standard player. Maybe this is just... Or maybe it... Well, I don't know. Five mana is pretty expensive for this effect when it's a choice for your opponent. Because if you're playing against Mono Black, it's like, well, I'll just let you have a 4 for flyer, and I'll play my Desecration Demon. You know? And if you're playing it against aggro, you're already dead by turn five. Yeah, for constructed, I think it's, it's just or standard. It's just not there. But yeah. for limited, standard constructed not there. Yeah. Limited, I think it's yeah. fine against certain decks. If they mm -hmm. have a bunch of cheap creatures, it's going to be a lot less good. But if they don't, it's still it'll be even. Fine. It's still fine if that's the case because it will then block their other cheap creatures too. Yeah. But get ever getting a four four flying out of it usually I would expect be more rare and mm -hmm. good. Sudden Storm, three and a blue instant. Tap up to two target creatures. Those creatures don't untap during their controller's next untap step. Scry one. So it's they're just uh, yeah. they're just basically updating spells and tacking one more mana yes. on it to get a scry. We've seen because this is what chilling wind or whatever it was it's called. It's frost breath, right? Frost breath, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, Not much to say. Frost breath is playable. This will be playable and yeah. limited. Sun bond, three and a white enchantment aura. Enchanted creature has whenever whenever you gain life, put that many plus one plus one counters on this creature. So I think it's way too slow. It's four mana cast. I cost. agree. I'm really surprised that this isn't uncommon. I mean, other than the fact that you'd never want to see this card ever, you know. So at best and or it's aura. I at, really yeah. hate this card. At worst, at least you're getting a heroic trigger, but it's and a white devotion. That's about it. I think at four mana, I would have liked it more at two, two white. Yeah, I think it's just far too pricey mm -hmm. to ever really get yeah, the value you want to like, get out of it. Uh, Vortex Elemental, one blue, zero one. I'm really intrigued by this guy. He's mm -hmm. an elemental, one blue. You put him and each uh, creature blocking or blocked by it on top of their owner's libraries. Then those players shuffle their libraries or five mana target creature blocks Vortex Elemental. This turn of fable. Are we gonna see? Blue control play this, or is it too slow? It's a good, like, maybe good sideboard. 
just to it's, say it even stops tramplers, which is really huge. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, you can stop Gorklan Rampager all day. I guess it's not good against uh, Polycrano since they can just nuke it right away. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I think it's okay. It's cool. I like it. Maybe it's not as good as I initially thought, but for limited at least, yeah, it's, it's going to be really good. Limited. Um, Whims of the Fates, six mana sorcery. Starting with you, each player separates all permanents he or she controls into three piles, then each player chooses one of his or her piles at random and sacrifices those permanents. This card's kind of funny. You split it into three piles. It's like typical red chaotic nature, you know, just weird as hell. Yeah. It's expensive and it this doesn't... This one is so weird. It's expen All the expensive red spells that never have a controllable outcome, they never see any constructed play, you know? Uh, but this card's funny at the very least because you have to. S it involves a player sacking a bunch of permanents, you know. This one's so on... stupid. <laughs> I like the piles can be empty. I feel like I'd always take my chances with leaving one, like having one pile or something like that, you know, or doing two piles only and leaving one totally empty. I don't, I don't know, know if it's best if to you split it up three ways. Yeah, I don't know either. I think it's going to take too long to delve into that. We're, okay, we're, okay, we're on a yeah. tight sorry, time constraint. Sorry. Siren of the Silent Song. One colored us a blue and a black 2-1 flyer zombie siren creature. And it's got inspired. Each opponent discards a card and puts the top card of his or her library into his or her graveyard. It's cool. Mm -hmm. I really, I mean, for limited, it's phenomenal. Constructed, probably not good enough. Decent, though. The discard is kind of relevant. I think it's usually relevant. Yeah. For limited, this is going to be a blowout. If they get, like, mm -hmm. one attack in, it's done so much work already, I feel like. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this guy goes unchecked and limited and for limited, two turns. It, it, that's, it's, like, almost bomb you. It'll think, just, yeah, you know? it'll destroy you in limited. Yeah. But, I mean, for that matter, I guess if there's a zero removal constructed deck, this will play really well against them. Mm -hmm. Or know? if you're, like, if you have enough other shit that they need to take down. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I, I do like this card a lot, mm -hmm. though. Plea for Guidance, uh, six mana sorcery, search your library for up to two enchantment cards, reveal them, put them in your hand, and shuffle your library. I mentioned more expensive than Three Dreams. It's twice the cost of Idyllic Tutor, so there you go. <laughs> so it fits. Yeah. Um, how good is it going to be in Limited? Probably not great because of six mana, but you do get, you get value out of it. Commander Bomb, for sure. All search spells usually are. Mm -hmm. Oracle of Bones this is a 2-2 two two red 3-1 haste tribute to when it enters the battlefield, if tribute wasn't paid, you may cast an instant or sorcery card from your hand without paying its mana cost. Uh, I actually like this. This is like one of the few red cards I like from this set. This is one that I actually feel could be a tribute, or like a actual constructed tribute card. Possibly. It does depend on what your ratio to creature and how many instant and sorceries mm -hmm. you're playing. But I think it's at least worth a try since it's got haste. Yeah, that's kind of the thing that I was thinking about it, too. Hunter's Prowess, 5 mana sorcery. Until end of turn, target creature gets plus 3, plus 3, and gains trample. And whenever you, this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw that many cards. I think this card's bomb. Mm -hmm. I really do think this card's great and limited. You can end up drawing tons of spells, especially if this hits any number of heroic creatures. Mm -hmm. So I think this will be a highly playable limited card. Yeah. Potential card value you get from it's huge. Nyxborn Triton, three mana, two three, Merfolk, and it's five mana to bestow. And Enchant Creature is plus two, plus three. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Usually the three mana, two threes are an important part of the format. And Blue loves to have them. And this one I really like as a, a bestow creature. Mm -hmm. Simple, mm -hmm. elegant. Nyxborn Eidolon, one and a black, two one, uh, enchantment spirit creature. It's got five mana bestow. Enchant creature gets plus two plus one, so fine. It's a two mana two one at worst, mm -hmm. and a five mana plus two plus one. Yeah, I think I like the blue one more. But yeah, oh for sure. This one still. unlimited, still fine. Mm -hmm. Next born Rolliker, one red, one one, and then it's got two mana bestow. Enchant creature gets plus one plus one. This is okay. I think this is totally limited playable since it's for heroic. Super, it's super cheap good. bestow, yeah. So I think this I think is actually it's the most inexpensive bestow we've had. So that makes it actually a really high pick in my mm -hmm. mind too. Nixborn Wolf, Tuna Green, uh, three one. So this is all. I'm just going through the whole cycle here. Mm -hmm. And then it's got five mana bestow. 
and uh, Jane creature gets plus three plus one. So it's fine once again. Yet another uh, limited. Looks like they went with five mana for most of that cycle as yep. the bestow cost. So that's cool. Just the red one, really. Uh, Malitas Astronomer, two mana, one three, human wizard, and it's got heroic. Um, look at the top three cards of your library, reveal an enchantment card from among them and put it into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. I love that it feeds itself. Yeah, I know, that's what I was thinking about this one too. So good in, in limited for heroic with enchantments, <coughs> or with Excuse auras, me. I mean. Yeah, I think we're going to see this, uh, this is going to see some and that, some limited play. Yeah, definitely. at uncommon, it's, it's going to be nice to be able to pick these up. This is a high pick in limited. Mm -hmm. I think it's very strong. The Triton Fortune Hunter and that, just value mm -hmm. all over the place. All right. Divination. Coming back. Not much to say about it. Always cool to see it. Yeah. In limited, just fine. Good in multiples, mm -hmm. usually, even in limited. I do like the art for it. Thunderous Might. One in a red aura. Uh, whenever enchanted creature attacks, it gets plus X plus zero until in turn where X is your devotion to red. This card's a little bit meh. I agree. Uh, I feel like it's just significantly worse than Madcap from Gate Crash, so I'm a little bit disappointed for that. Still, definitely limited playable. Mm -hmm. All the auras are. Yeah. On that one haste flyer, this is a really cool card, actually. Even doing it on an arena athlete, you mm -hmm. know, yep, making something definitely. not block, get in for a bonus two damage. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. I like it. Nullify, two blue, instant, counter target, creature, or aura spell. It's cool. So a little bit more cost intense, color intensive than Essence Scatter, but you get the bonus of hitting auras. It'd be, it would have been cool if it was a creature or enchantment, but... Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, a little bit more narrow than that, uh, but still very playable, and I love that it hits both. It hits both sides of of bestow creatures, yeah. And that's really yeah. what it went. I it think needed that was to exactly be what the intention yeah. was. It was basically to make essence scatter, make sure it hit bestow creatures. All right, Seder Fire Dancer, two mana, one one enchantment creature Seder. Whenever an instant or sorcery spell you control deals damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to target creature that player controls. So. Never an instant or sorcery spell. You control damage to an opponent. I like it. So you can burn an opponent yeah. and then essentially burn one of their creatures. Definitely limited playable, but I'm not convinced yet. It's constructed. Certainly not main deck. Potentially sideboard, but likely not. I think it's just a, a little bit too narrow and uh, not bangy enough on the front side. I agree. Especially at being a rare. Two one would have been nice. Yeah. Revoke Existence, 2 mana, Sorcery, it's a reprint. It's coming back from Scars of Mirrodin. Glad to see it. Uh-huh. <clears throat> now we have yet another way to get gods out of the way. Yeah, this one might actually see Constructed play oh, in, definitely. Main, in main decks. Though. Oh, okay, you're going to say that. You're going to go that far. Yeah. I like it. I like where you're going with that. All right, we got just tons more spoilers to go through here. So we're going to do our best. Actually, I don't even know if we're going to have time. We'll run it a little bit long here. Just long and... Um, yeah, I guess we'll run long today. It might take a little bit longer, unfortunately, to get this up on oh. Libsyn because of the size of it, but I'll try and adjust it. So okay. let's just blaze through these. Okay. Three and a white, three, three, Vigilance. And then uh, it's a Crow and Phalanx. So four mana, three, three, Vigilance. And then two and a red. Creatures you control get plus one, plus zero until end of turn. Cool. I think it's great for limited. Oh, definitely good and limited. Mm -hmm. Very strong ability in a creature heavy deck. I so. like it with vigilance too. That makes it relevant. Yeah, and red white was already a good heroic strategy, so mm -hmm. it rewards you for just having a bunch of different heroic guys. Yeah, I like it a lot. A crow in sky guard, two mana, one one flyer. Whenever you cast a spell, it targets it. It's got heroic, and it gets plus one plus one. So it's alongside like wing steed rider. And uh, favorite hoplite, pretty much all the white heroic guys do that mm -hmm. ability. Not all of them, but most, most of them. Most of them, yeah. That's like the white based ability, just the one plus one plus one counter. This one's absolutely going to be a high pick. I don't mm -hmm. know how you can deny that. It's got flying. Yeah. If you want to go heroic, this is the one to get for sure. Mm -hmm. Elite Skirmisher, two and a white, three one. It's got heroic. Um, you can tap a creature, so I, I kind of like this one. I like that one, too. This one works about the same way Arena Athlete does, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's definitely limited playable. Afar is Radiance, one white. Enchanted creature has one and a white tap. You gain three life. A eh, little bit mediocre, but good with Inspired. Inspired, so. yeah. 
If you want to be the inspired strategy, this is fine. This might even be fine if you are inspired and pick up a couple heroic guys so you can trigger their ability once or off of it, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think since this is probably going to go later, um, the inspired strategy can be a real thing. Mm -hmm. I think it can be really good. Yeah, if you I get a, enough inspired guys, this the, is go. This comes late, yeah. so you can make it work. The inspired enchantments, and they are very clear which ones they are, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Any of the ones that tap. Yeah, um, those are <clears throat> going to go late pretty much all the time. Uh, I've got Excoriate, three and a white sorcery, exile target tap creature. Uh, it's removal. It's expensive. I don't like it that much, I guess. It's not rebuke. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not... I think it's just uh, a little bit too slow and painful. It would have been cool if it was instant speed. Yeah. You know. But then it would get rid of attackers, so. Essentially do the, the same thing. Yeah. Except, well, this one makes except you take the guys. damage first. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't kill Vigilance, you're right. But. So I don't really like this card that much. I still think it'll see a little bit of limited play. I think play. it's a limited player for sure, but not a ton of them. Yep. It's still more expensive than Assassinate, so mm. it's not even... Yeah, right. The Exile, I don't know. That justifies the extra mana. Yeah. Ghostblade, Eidolon, Toon White, 1-1, one, one, uh, Double Strike. And then it's got Bestow for 6. So we're looking at... It's It does seem a little bit pricey, doesn't yeah. it? But we're also looking at a set that's got just a ton of auras and other Bestow guys. Mm -hmm. So I I think this card's actually still really playable. Yeah. I think it's In a very limited, limited card. Yeah. Even though it's pricey for... And only one white, though, to cast it is really cool, too. So very splashable. Yeah, good point. And it's uncommon. Mm -hmm. Great Heart, 4 mana, 2, 4, Elk creature. Not much to be said about this. Yeah. You'll play it. Yep, normal card. I wouldn't play it too much yeah. since it's 4 mana. But I can see... I'm going to be happy when my opponent busts out a Great Heart, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Griffin Dreamfinder, 3 and 2 white for a 1, 4 flyer. And when enters the battlefield, return target enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah. Great card. I like this card. For, a lot. for limited. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tons of enchantments in the I set. I really like the art, too. Great blocker, evasive blocker, uh, which is great. Mm -hmm. And then you get beneficial value, maybe a bestow guy back to make him huge. Right. I think he's highly playable. And like you said, double devotion. Mm -hmm. Good. Hold at bay, one and a white, instant. Prevent the next seven damage that would be dealt to target creature or player this turn. Uh, I mean, at the very worst, it's a combat trick, but it's not great. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. I wish that it let you gain the seven as well, but maybe it's asking too much. So, no, I don't think it's that great. But it's a combat trick, like yeah. I said. So it's a it's, pseudo fog. Could be a, I think a sideboard. I, I think it would be a good sideboard uh, plan yeah. against... It is a fine combat trick against a monster, like a big guy. Yeah, know. and just burn, stops burn mm -hmm. really well That's if true. they have a high burn suit, you know. Mortal's Ardor, one white instant target creatures, plus one, plus one, and gains lifelink until a turn. It's going to be a hugely playable card. Mm -hmm. We already get fatties from Heroic, and now you're just going to get lifelink off of it. Mm -hmm. It's really going to be like that moment of heroism in Innisrod mm -hmm. feeling, where it's just like, the board you can it's just completely yeah you can completely flip board states with Moment life link buffs. Blow, yeah. so I think this is going to be no exception with all the heroic guys and auras mm -hmm. uh, ornithark three and two white three three flyer tribute two and if they don't pay the tribute you get two one one white bird creature tokens with flying so if you have some benefit from having a bunch of creatures say I don't know perforos or something it's cool but you're dealing with five power flying no matter what, I yeah. think is the point with this one. Which makes this one one of the better tribute cards. Yeah. So, for limited, highly playable, mm -hmm. possibly even first pick. I think it's always best if you're playing against that card to yeah. tribute it. I think it's pretty much always first pick, actually. Yeah. I Just because so five mana, five power, evasive, mm -hmm. non-rare, that's really good. Uh, Chorus of the Tides, 4 mana, 3, 2, Flyer. Whenever you cast a spell that targets it, scry 1. Nah. 3, 2, Flyer is awesome, though. I yeah. love 3, 2, Flyer. So it's uh, Assault Griffin, or what's actually the blue version of Assault Griffin? I forget. Uh, Moon Hearing is the most recent. Snapping Drake also. Snapping Drake was the one I was thinking of. but So it's Snapping Drake with Heroic, scry 1. Mm -hmm. So it's at least strictly better than Snapping Drake. Yeah. 
Deep Water Hypnotist, 2 mana, 2-1, two, Merfolk Wizard, with Inspired, Tar Creature and Opponent Controls gets minus 3, minus 0 until end of turn. This card's actually kind of cool. Mm -hmm. I think it's better it than it be looks on first. Aggressive. Yeah, it really does. Because then they, you get in with it, they play their 3-drop, you mm -hmm. make their 3-drop have minus 3 power, mm -hmm. and maybe you get to keep get coming in. Yeah. So I think this is actually going to see... A fair amount of yeah. uh, limited play. Constructed, probably not. No. No. Although it's actually kind of good against Boros Reckoner. Just, just saying. saying. Just saying. Hey, just saying. How, oh, yeah. The, all their power goes away, but they can still block it and then, and then take the damage, damage and then deal. That's true. No, good point. So it's not good against Reckoner. Yeah. All right. Eternity Snare. Six mana. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, draw a card and chant creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. You say this is a reprint? Mm hmm. From Time Spiral. Okay. And it was common then, but... Now so they made it uncommon. Common. Not sure why yet. It is pricey, but... It's very pricey. It's cool you get a card out of it. Mm -hmm. It's a decent deal. Uh, Evanescent Intellect. One blue aura. The chain creature has one and a blue tap. Target player puts the top three cards of his or library into his or graveyard. Seems a bit pricey, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But we've got the inspired thing going on, so who knows? Yeah, actually with... No, oh, no, it's not even that good. See, Deepwater Hypnotist desperately wants you to have a way to untap it on your opponent's turn. Yeah, that's true. So, actually, you know, Prophet of Crewfix and Limited with Inspired is is really good. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. Um, Evanescent Intellect, I think it's still slow if you're yeah. trying to do the mill strategy. Yeah. So, but... Maybe something. Playable and Inspired, for sure. Mm -hmm. And Milling 3 is not insignificant, so... You can hit some important cards in their deck. Mm -hmm. Flitter Step Eidolon, 2 mana, 1-1, one, one. enchantment creature spirit. It's got Bestow for 6, and it can't be blocked. So it's either plus 1, plus 1, and can't be blocked, or a 1-1, one, one, can't be blocked, which is the new text for unblockable. Mm -hmm. um, I like it. I like unblockable creatures. I like that it's dual purpose. The Bestow on it is expensive, but... Making a guy bigger and unblockable seems like it takes the game over. Mm -hmm. so Especially I think, in limited. So I think that's going to see some definite play. Yeah. In limited. Uh, Oracle's Insight, four mana. Uh, aura, enchanted creature has tap, scry one, then draw a card. I think this card's great. Yeah. This is a great inspired <laughs> I card. Know, I know. And the fact that you don't have to pay any mana to get the tap effect, too, is like really crazy for for what the rest of the inspired enchantments have been so mm -hmm. far. So this, this one's really cool. I think this card's highly playable outside of uh, the inspired strategy, mm -hmm. just in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still fine with heroic. Really good with, like, if you have a big blocker, somebody like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Scry 1 draw is huge. Mm -hmm. I really like it. Every turn. I think this adds up really fast. Yeah, I would say so. I think that actually could shut games down really quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, Retraction Helix, one blue instant until end of turn, target creature gains tap, return target non land permanent to its owner's hand. So, Banishing Knack was the card from Eventide that mm -hmm. did the same thing. Now we're seeing it uh, with a new name. And that art is sweet, but Banishing Knack was like a letdown then, too. And that was to help the untap, untap ability. Uh, yeah, ability. Um, but it feels, I have a feeling Inspired is going to play better. Yeah, I agree. It's funny that they've so far taken. Two abilities from that block, Shadowmore, and revamp them in a way like Inspired is kind of like the untapped ability. You know, mm -hmm. you really need to have it tapped before you can get the benefit from it. So, I think Retraction Helix is totally uh, playable and limited too. Mm -hmm. I like having a bounce effect. I think it's actually better in this than it wasn't even tied because this is a huge aura set. So, I think the untap ability overall proved to be kind of lackluster, so mm -hmm. I think this is a lot better. Uh, Siren of the Fanged Coast, 5 mana, 1-1 one, one flyer, tribute 3. If they don't pay the tribute, you get to gain control of target creature. I actually like this card. Um, this is one of the better ones in my mind, because getting a 5 mana 4-4 four, four flyer is huge, and getting a, or getting a 5 mana steal a creature. And the, cre the gain control of it is not even dependent on having the Siren either. It's so, just permanent. Yeah. So if they don't tribute, you just get one of their creatures. All right. Then I think this is really good. Yeah. Both sides. So this would be a super high pick. Mm hmm Although it does suck out an empty board, admittedly, because then yeah. you can't even really play it. Mm hmm It's true. You'd never want a five mana one one that has no effect. Mm hmm So in that respect, it kind of sucks, but I still think it's a highly I think it's a really card. good card, yeah. Sphinx's Disciple, five mana two two flyer. 
with inspired uh, draw card. I don't, know what, I don't know what more you can ask <laughs> yeah. for. Small body, but evasive, and you get to draw cards every time. This is even... I mean, this effect is better than the three drop guys that makes you that makes your opponent discard. Mm -hmm. But this is more mana, obviously, so you see the difference. But imagine how fast this adds up. Two turns of... You get a free divination and four damage in. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this guy is like... I don't know, I really like him. Truly his bane is that he's going to be slow. So mm -hmm. if you don't have a good... If you don't have the ground locked up... Yeah, so I guess this card's actually kind of difficult to yeah. play against some decks. He actually decks, is but... probably better if you're further into the Inspired strategy, where you have cards like Oracle's Insight and like other tap enchantments to really benefit him. Mm -hmm. um, Stratus Walk. Two mana... Aura, when it enters the battlefield, draw a card, and chain creature has flying, and it can block only creatures with flying. I like this card a lot. Mm -hmm. I like this one, too. You get the evasion, you get draw a card. All of those cantrip auras have proven to be great from yeah. Theros. Even the two mana, uh, plus one, plus zero, one in black. I think that one actually is one of my favorite ones, because it's like, it actually advances your clock. Mm -hmm. But I guess the dragon mantle did as well, yeah. but quite a bit more. And on the, well, on the three-drop Cerberus guy, too, it was really good. Yeah. The double striker. Mm -hmm. um, this card's cool, though. I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. Really good with Heroic. Yep. Green-blue, I could see being with the fatties. The Battlemaster, drawing a card, attacking him for five flying. Mm -hmm. Or is it four flying? I think it is five, isn't it? The Battlemaster gets plus three, or three plus one plus one counters. Wow. So it is five. Yeah. Um, archetype of Finality. Six or maybe it's two plus one plus one counters, and he's a three three. I think that's what it is. No, because she, the battle wise, whatever, gets two plus one plus one counters, so he gets three. Oh, okay. So he's a but two two. He, no, I, I think he's he a, a three three, three and he oh, gets, okay. becomes a six six. All right, that's even better. Stratus walk, draw a card, and get him for six. Mm -hmm. uh, archetype of finality, six mana, two three creatures he controls. This is part of that cycle. Creatures you control have death touch, and then your creatures your opponents control lose death touch and can't have or gain death touch. A little pricey. Yeah, meh, because your opponents don't usually have death touch. Um, six mana, two, three. If eh, it does have death touch at least on its own. Maze it's, Abomination was a four, five, and basically did the same thing. No, that's a good point. And that's where I uh, am kind of upset by this card. But this will see, um, I have a feeling this, this will limited. see a little bit of limited play. Not a ton, but... Yeah. It's it's uh, if you have a huge creature yeah. count, good with trample. Early. If you have yeah. a, like a fair amount of trample in your deck, uh, asphyxiate, one and two black, destroy target untapped creature. The unfortunate aspect: this is a sorcery, which really is a big downfall to it. Yeah. I would say, mm -hmm. since at that point it's just strictly worse than than murder, since murder is the same mana cost. And, Instant speed, kill yeah. anything. It is kind of funny that it's double black for this effect. Destroying untapped creature is really. So this card's kind of funny for that purpose. Yeah, actually, it's the opposite of assassinate, and I feel like it assassinate happens more often. Like having a tapped creature. I mean, it's cool that it's better against vigilance guys, but it sucks that it's it's bad if you're already on the if you're already on the back end of attacks. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do anything for you off the top. Right. So I don't like it yeah. that much. Uh, claim of Erebos, one in a black. Enchant creature has one in a black. Tap target player loses two life. Awesome. With the uh, awesome in general, but especially awesome with the inspired strategy. Mm -hmm. Like even imagine this on that sweet um, regenerator yeah. skeleton dude. Make him lose two on tap. Lose another one. I gain one. It's a lot of value. Yeah. I like him on the blue flyer too, the draw a card flyer, or this card on the draw yeah. card flyer. Lose two egg. So basically, cool. it's like he's attacking. Yeah, I like that too. So I think this could, this is definitely going to see some limited That's play. good for Inspired. Uh, Forsaken Drifters, four mana, four two zombie. When it dies, put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard. Kind of funny. We saw this on Polluted Dead in Avacyn Restored, but you got to do it to them, is that mm -hmm. right? Okay, so now it's, you have to do it to All yourself. Right. That was Rock Crown Ghoul, I think. Oh, Polluted okay. Dead was Destroy the Land. Oh. Well, I got it all wrong then. But this one. <laughs> but it was the same. So basically. this one does it to your graveyard, or your library into your graveyard, which kind of sucks. 
So who knows? Maybe this is good yeah, enough for our craft sort of draft. A, a much better Innistrad card. Yeah, no kidding. I think uh, we could add this to crap potentially. Mm -hmm. Grizzly Transformation. Two and a black. Aura. Land enters the battlefield, draw a card. Enchanted creature has Intimidate. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. I really like it actually. Cantrip. Evasion. This is the second Cantrip Evasion Aura we've seen. Mm -hmm. I really like it a lot. Is I this part too. of a cycle? Are we going to see more it of that? It might be. I feel like. If we've seen the white one, it's already been revealed, and I don't remember what it is. All right, Necrobite, two and a black. Wait, this is already a this is a Avacyn uh, restored. Yep. Yeah, so two and a black instant target creature gains tap touch until in a turn regenerate it. This card's uh, not bad actually. I like that it at worst you know regenerates your guy, so it's anti removal, and at best at best you can chump block a fatty, and then instead of it dying, you get to regen and kill his fatty. I mm -hmm. like it. You know, it's obviously a little bit dependent on you having a decent creature count, but yeah, this has the added bonus of hitting heroic guys now, so I actually really like this actually, card. Actually, yeah, that's a good point. This benefits more in this set. I think it'll be a stronger player because of the heroic triggers. Although that was a problem with Avizen too; they had bad removal. Mm -hmm. um, Odunos River Traveler, two and a black, two two zombie. When enters the battlefield, return target enchantment creature card from your graveyard to your hand. And it's got one white and sack it. Return target enchantment creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So it's a it's a little bit of like a what more narrow. Um, it's almost like it's a a more narrow uh, grave digger. Mm -hmm. But it does hit the. You said it doesn't hit bestow guys, right? Is that? No, it does. Okay. In the graveyard. So a Dunos River Traveler does hit bestow guys. Yeah. Okay. So this guy was made for. For that reason, I think he's pretty highly playable in this, although he is black and white, so he might suffer the same fate as, like, that, uh, is it Scholar of Athreos, the mm -hmm. one that, yeah, so he might be that sort of thing where, well, although you get the bonus without paying the white, right, so. Right. He's he's just good, then. He's, like, a slightly cheaper Grave Digger, he'll except probably be, more narrow. He'll probably be much better once um, Journey into Nyx is out. You know? Yeah. Let me see even more Bestow mm -hmm. guys. Uh, Sanguimancy, 5 mana sorcery, you draw X cards and you lose X life, where X is your devotion to black. Um, that's cool. I like that card. I feel like there's points where you're going to be unable to play it because you've got too much, but can you imagine this alongside your Grey Merchants? Yeah. It's really good. That's a good point. So even getting like 3 cards for 5, losing 3 life would be pretty good. Mm -hmm. I guess I, you can't go hog wild on these, I, but I think it's a good EDH card or commander card for oh, sure, though. Okay. So. Yeah, uh, but for limited, I wouldn't pick it super early, but it can be high value if you're. Yeah. If you're deep It'll in probably black. come around late too, unless yeah. somebody else is really deep in black. Uh, War Chanter of Mogus, five mana, three three, inspired. When it becomes untapped, target you control gains intimidate until end of turn. I really like how this works. If you get one attack in, then you can just keep doing it to himself. Mm -hmm. Kind of sucks that. He's only a 5 mana 3-3, three, three, you know? Yeah. So, unless you have some, you know, good synergies with your Inspired. Or like a Spring Leaf Drum. I think this guy's <laughs> not going to pull enough weight. Yeah. Uh, just a little bit too pricey, but the Double Devotion's nice. Mm -hmm. Weight of the Underworld. 4 mana Aura. Enchant Creature gets minus 3, minus 2. We were a little bit unimpressed with this. It's pretty pricey. I mean, Dead Weight was 1 mana. Mm -hmm. Minus 2, minus 2 Aura. So... I mean, that was, granted, it was a more aggressive format, too. Yeah. You know, so that was necessary. But. I don't really like this card. No, I much. really feel like this could have been three mana. You know, Stab Wound was three mana. So I think it's too pricey. But it's still going to see some Yeah, you'll play. still have to play it. Archetype of Aggression, one and two red, three, two. Creatures of Control have Trample. Creatures of Opponents Control lose Trample and can't have or gain Trample. I actually like this card. Can you mm -hmm. imagine this in some sort of green, red, fatty deck? Mm -hmm. Getting the trample, and he gets it himself with the three power. I actually like this guy. I think he's he's really good for yeah. uh, Might, the mid-range green-red. Yeah, may help to bring that deck more in line against their own, or like in the mirror. Because mm -hmm. then your Gork, the, your opponent's Gore Clan Rampagers don't do anything against you and stuff like that. So, oh, yeah. Well, I was thinking limited, but... Oh, yeah, but I actually still think it's a constructed playable card. That's cool. Yeah, there are a few guys now with Trample. 
Um, Bolt of Karenos, one and two red sorcery, it deals three damage to target creature, player, scry one. I don't really like this card. I really wish that it was instant speed. The fact that it's sorcery, mm -hmm. I don't actually even think. I, I, I'm almost positive it's not going to see constructed play. No. Limited, on the other hand, very much so. Yeah. Kills stuff, scries, so I think it's good for that. Cyclops of one eyed pass, four mana, five, two. What more can you say? Double oh. devotion. Poke its eye out with yeah. the, the <laughs> eye gouge. Yeah. Uh, not that good. It's a cobble brute for one more red. Yeah. But in this set, that's, that's better. better. Yeah. Kragma Butcher, two and a red, two, three, inspired. It gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. This card's pretty interesting. I actually think I like this card quite a bit uh, for the aggressive strategies. This is really good alongside the red, white, uh, heroic creatures that. Uh, the white one that taps, mm -hmm. and Arena Athlete that makes it not block. Yeah. I think if you have a way to get past the defenses, the Kragma Butcher can add up to be a lot really fast. If you get the one attack in for value and then untap with it, you're presumably you're going to get in for four damage for the rest mm -hmm. of the game, you know, or until yeah. it trades with something. I really like this card for a limited. This is such a, a good card. Mm -hmm. And now we at least have another Minotaur to maybe make the Minotaur strategy be a little more realistic if you happen to open the Lord, you mm -hmm. know? Because this guy's really good at the Lord, and even the Kragma War Caller is pretty good yeah. at that. So, yeah, I like it. Lightning Volley, three and a red instant, tail end of turn, creatures you control gain. Tap this creature, deals one damage to dark creature or player. We saw this on something else, right? There was like a um, giant that did it at yeah. five mana. Yeah, Fury Stoke Giant. So we've seen this something like this before. Yeah. I don't think it's that great unless you have access to a ton of dudes. Um, Obviously inspired is what they're going for with this one. Oh, okay. I was going to say it works reasonably well, I guess, if you have the Akroan uh, Crusader. Crusader or the new two-white guy we talked about earlier that spits out the yeah. Vigilant guys. Mm -hmm. So, Because actually with the Vigilant guys you get to attack plus use this. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of cool. But... It doesn't do anything for Heroic itself, unfortunately. I don't think it's super highly playable. It's a little more difficult to use, especially since it doesn't give it to permanence you control, mm -hmm. which I believe the Flame, Fury Stoke did. Flame right? Fuselade did that. Oh, okay. Yeah, just creatures is just a bit too narrow to make this really that good. Yeah. Reckless Reveler, 2 mana, 2, 1, 1, and sack it. Destroy target artifact, so it's okay. the Forged remake of... Or yep. No, uh, no. Uh, Torch Fiend. Torch Fiend, remake of that that we saw in Dark Ascension. Uh, just fine in this format. I like uh, that it takes out all of the rare artifacts from Theros, mm -hmm. which are all super highly playable and limited. So having a nice, cheap, common answer for Bow of Nylia and Whip of Erebus and Spear of Heliod, mm -hmm. Bident, and whatever one I forgot to mention. Um, uh, Hammer. Yeah. Having the answer for that, all of them at common. Very good. And you still got the 2-mana two 2-power. Two Rise to the Challenge. 2-mana instant. Target creature uh, gets plus 2, plus 0, and gains first strike until end of turn. Awesome. Mm -hmm. In this format. Great heroic trigger. Um, even if you don't have heroic, just a good trick in general. This has had different names and been the same thing before. I just can't think of what it was called. Uh, well, they've done it in varying amounts like Thunderstrike and stuff like that. You're right. Thunderstrike was the same mana cost, but only plus one, plus zero in first no, strike. No, I think it was plus two, plus zero still. Oh, okay. But Kindled Fury was only one, and plus one, plus zero in first strike. Okay, so they, they're they fine. Yeah. Kindled Fury wasn't even played that much in limited, no. but I think this is way better with Heroic. Mm -hmm. uh, Scouring Sands, one in a red, sorcery, deals one damage to each creature your opponent's control, scry one. She kind of like this card, because it's your opponent's control only. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely going to see limited sideboard play. Is it going to see constructed sideboard play? Possibly. I actually think that's a possibility. Yeah. I like it for a mono red deck or any sort of red deck against the mono white list since it sweeps a lot yeah, of their guys. Isn't it kind of just better than electricery the way that you want to play electricery? I'd... You don't really benefit from having electricery on their turn necessarily, right? Only if it's in response to a Spear of Heliod. Yeah, that's true. But then you could have done this the turn before they got the spear. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I would 
I don't know what deck's going to play it. It's only going to see sideboard play, but it's both limited and constructed. Same deal. Stormcaller of Karenos, two and a red, two, two, haste, and that's got one and a blue, scry one. This card's cool. I like mm -hmm. that it digs for you. This is going to see a lot of limited play for this sure. It's really cool. They've put out a lot of red haste creatures in this set, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Considering, for the most part, I think red looks really weak coming out of the set. Um, Thunder Brute, six mana, five, five, Trampler with Tribute three. And if the Tribute wasn't paid, it gains haste. So, six mana, five, five, Trample haste, or six mana, eight, 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 eight Trample. This is one of the better Tribute cards mm -hmm. for sure for limited. Limited bomb, I'd say. Yep. Charging Badger, one green, one, one, Trampler. It's cool with, like, the Titan Strength or buff spells. Good with bestow on it, mm -hmm. but probably not going to see a ton of limited play. Yeah. Land or Elite, I don't think did either. No. Karametra's Favor, one and a uh, green aura, draw a card, and then it gives a creature tap, add one, might have any color to your mana pool. This one's good. Great with Inspired. Mm -hmm. So, really cool with Inspired. I'm excited to see. This card's definitely going to see play for that reason. Mischief and Mayhem, 5 mana sorcery, up to 2 target creatures, each get plus 4, plus 4 in turn of turn. I was telling you, I think this card's bomb and limited. Put this on the right heroic guys, yeah. and you just go over the top, mm -hmm. put it on a couple tramplers. The fact that you're able to potentially do an additional 8 damage for 5 mana, I really like it. Yeah, on the tap guy and an arena athlete mm -hmm. to get rid of 2 blockers. Yeah. Huge. Mm-hmm. Mortals Resolve, one in a green, target creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains indestructible until a turn, instant. I think this is a great trick. I like the how There's not a lot of instant speed given indestructible, mm -hmm. is there? No. What's the one in uh, Scars of Mirrodin? Uh, it's, it's like a four mana spell, but... Yeah, it's something like withstand death. Oh, yeah. wait, wait. Scars of Mirrodin? Oh, is it not in Scars of Mirrodin? It, I thought it was. Withstand death is one green. And that and makes then, him indestructible, yeah, too? creature becomes indestructible until end of turn. All right, well, this pay an additional mana, but you get the bonus to it, so this could be really important um, since it protects you against, like, the Sip of Hemlock and stuff yeah. like that. Or blowouts against your heroic guys. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Um, the fight spells, mm -hmm. like the, uh, what's-his-face, Essence, uh, Time to Feed or whatever. Mm -hmm. This is a really great counter for Time to Feed. Yeah, that is. Especially if you know they were just yeah just enough to kill it yeah, yeah then you really one. you yeah. really punish the green on that one. Mm -hmm. uh, noble quarry two and a green one one, um, and then it's got bestow for six and it's like a prize unicorn sort of deal. It's a unicorn creature, same sort of deal. They have to be blocked by all, all creatures. Creature, all creatures have to block them. Mm -hmm. It's a powerful ability, and the fact that you can surprise them. Like, with the Unicorn, they saw it coming a turn early. Mm -hmm. This, for six mana, they don't even get to see it coming. Yeah. That's huge. So I think this is actually a really bomb uh, limited card. Mm -hmm. Ferris Band Tromper. Three and a green, three, three. Inspired. Uh, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. This guy's pretty good. Mm -hmm. I think he, he could add up fast. He's a little bit clunky since he's like a hill giant on the front side in green. But I feel like you get an attack in 4-4, four, four, you should be yeah. sitting pretty good. Like, you're going to be able to keep swinging. If you out. can continue to swing with him, he just grows. So yeah, you're right. Like so if it. you have the tricks to support him even, mm -hmm. like the mortals resolve just to get in, mm -hmm. I could see him getting real bomb. Seder Wayfinder, 1 and a green, 1-1. One, one. Seder creature, when it enters the battlefield, reveal the top four cards of your library. Put a land card. You may put a land card from among them into your hand and put the rest into your graveyard. So we had talked about and looked at the Conley Woods deck that was self-mill mm -hmm. and tried it out since he does seem like a good fit for that deck. Unfortunately, he's pretty much the only card from this set that really impacts that deck. Yeah. And that deck's just a little bit too all over the place. To, to It's just not consistent enough. Yeah. But this was, a, I think, an actual legit addition to yeah, it. Yeah, it was, for sure. Uh, Satessan Oathsworn, 3 mana, 1-1. One, one, heroic. Whenever you cast a spell, it targets him, put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on him. That guy's sweet. Mm -hmm. um, get more green heroic guys that get bomby. Uh, yeah, you definitely need to pumps. be really deep into heroic to 
make this guy work though, because I love how how deep heroic's gotten now though, because yeah. you don't need to just be in white strictly. Yeah, you can be in you know blue and green. You can mm -hmm. be in red. Being and... in blue green would be really like a sweet combination to do because blue does have some sweet auras and stuff. You do red and green, tricks. red blue, mm -hmm. all of that. You know, you get all of these different heroic creatures, mm -hmm. and you probably want about eight to ten typically. But more often than not, you end up with like six or seven, you know? And so you now, really need to make them work for you. So maybe the count was going to go up now, though. Yeah, we're yeah, seeing more heroic guys, so I don't know. It looks like we're, we're seeing some great bestow, great auras, great instants. I feel like that strategy, which I already thought was the strongest, is getting even stronger, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, Satessan Starbreaker, three and a green, two, one. When it enters the battlefield, you may destroy target aura. I really think this card has the potential to function like a Slayer of the Wicked in this set. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? This could be this set Slayer of the Wicked since it destroys any of the bestow guys if they're bestowed. Mm -hmm. I see what you're saying, yeah. I mean, it's 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 good enough. And at common, it's fine. It's not going to be Slayer of the Wicked in that it's not a 3-2. Yeah. Well, and, and it doesn't kill a creature. It only gets rid of their auras. But there are a ton of auras around. Yeah. I guess another unfortunate aspect is, of it is there's both a cycle within this set and Theros of the cantrip auras. Mm -hmm. So they already got value sort of off of it if they've done it, you know. It just mm -hmm. makes it not as impactful. And a lot of those auras are not that great also, you know. It's mm -hmm. not like they're super stellar auras. Yeah. So I guess it is a little bit weaker than than maybe I was giving it credit for, but I still it think it's. It could be relevant. To I still definitely sure. I think it's like main deck one for sure. Mm -hmm. Snake of the Golden Grove, five mana four four tribute three, and if the tribute wasn't paid, you gain four life. So five mana four four gain four or five mana seven, um, seven seven. Eh. Okay. Yeah, aggro will give you a seven seven, and anyone else will give you a four four gain four life. I'm immediately less excited by it because it's five mana. Yeah. So exactly. Just not enough impact for five mana in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um so late it's gonna be a late mid to late pick in limited. Sword wise centaur, two mana three two. So gives you double devotion. Reasonably efficient beater. Not very exciting. It's strictly worse than Garrick's companion. But that's okay. It's double devotion, so Mm -hmm. Decent and decent power, so definitely playable and limited. Gorgon's Head, one one mana equipment, and then two mana to equip. It gives Death Touch. Kind of like this card for limited. That's uh, a really good limited card, in the, my opinion. The one we saw in Core Set was plus one, plus one, and gains Death Touch. What was that called? Yeah, Gorgon Flail. Yeah, so that they one was cool, too. Printed that. Yeah, and they didn't need to do the drop one mana cost and take away mm -hmm. the plus one, plus one. But whatever, that's cool. This, yeah. this card... This is more flavorful, I suppose, for the set, but Gorgon Flail would have worked fine, too. Sir, uh, Siren Song, Liar, 2 mana, Equipment, Equip Creature has 2 in tap, tap to our creature, and equips for 2. So That's cool. Yeah, this is going to be... If you're inspired, like if you have multiple inspired guys and you can't get in with them, this lets you tap 2 of your inspired guys a turn. And even if you're not inspired and inspired... I think this is... Oh, and uh, this is... Obviously, it's like a great card to make your guy mm -hmm. a master decoy. So this all over the place may be one of the few equipments that's playable for any deck, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. In a pinch. Um, I think we finally got through all the spoilers, so we got to call it quits. Thanks a lot for tuning in for this full uh, three-volume series. We had, we had to cover a lot in this last volume, but I'm glad that we got through it all. Overall, what's, our, what's your opinion about the set? Like, if you were to rate it out of ten... Just, you know, approximation, whatever, it doesn't matter. I would say, like, it's a six, probably. I mean, it suffers from the same thing that every mid-set does. There are, like, one or two cards that you really want out of it, you know, and then five or six that are okay, and then the rest are kind of just there to add to the limited strategies, so. Yeah, I want to be optimistic about this. I'd like to think that this set's going to end up being, like, a 7.5 or an 8 in terms of how it plays for draft, which is what I really care oh, about. Yeah. So um, that's going to be the bulk of my evaluation of it. But, I mean, for Constructed, like you said, there's really only a couple cards that anyone's caring about, mm -hmm. and uh, their prices reflect that. I mean, we're pretty yeah. much just looking at Xenagos and Brimas being the only right. ones. 
Right. Um, but yeah, for limited, who knows? I actually think it's a it adds a lot for limited, and it lets you begin to choose your strategy better than maybe Dark Ascension did. You know, mm -hmm. as far as a second set goes, I feel like Dark Ascension maybe didn't give you enough focus right away. Like if you wanted to go self mill on a Dark Ascension. You know, you could get Thought Scour and Screeching Scab, but it wasn't like there was a ton really there for you. But this one, I feel like you know if you can go heroic right away, and you know, I mean, you have tons of options mm -hmm. to go heroic and stuff. So you only get the one set to get the Monstrosity, and you only get the one set to get the Inspired, but you get two sets to get a ton of heroic. So mm -hmm. I feel like whether you like it or not, you're probably gonna end up taking a few heroic guys. Mm -hmm. How many you get? sort of depends, and I think their mission, as far as people playing Auras, has definitely been accomplished. Yeah. Um, Bestow has proven to be an insanely, insanely strong, limited ability. Yeah. Um, it's translated. It is a really, really, really strong ability in Limited. Yeah, like, and it hasn't translated too much to Constructed, yeah. but it, for there, Limited, it's insane. There needs to be a, a removal spell that destroys, like, a target creature, and then all... A creature auras, bestowed on like it. all auras attached to it. Yeah. Or destroy all auras attached to target creature, then destroy target creature. You know? And it can be expensive or whatever, but I feel like that effect needs to be around because and it would be even cool if it was split up, you know, so it didn't have to be destroy all auras on the creature and then destroy the creature. It could be destroy all auras auras on target creature. Or de destroy target creature. And or destroy target creature. Yeah, that's actually a good point. You could totally do Andor. So that would be cool. Yeah. And, uh, all right. That's it for this one. This is a long one. Thanks for tuning in the whole time. I appreciate it. Um, this is a lot of fun. We're going to see it real soon. We're doing pre-release next week. We're yeah. probably going to record something for that. I'm going to try to. And then we're going to have pre-release online. So mm -hmm. it's going to be exciting. Uh, all right. I'll see you guys next time.